we? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Maybe seated. And thank you for your confession of faith there, right? So, choosing and responding. In these uh, bread lessons that we've had over the summer, it seems like, the Gospel of John, in this lesson, Jesus says two important things that don't have much to do with bread. Chapter 6, 44. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. 665. I have told you that no one can come to me unless granted by the Father. And then in 70, did I not choose you? So when it comes to laying out a relationship with God, with Jesus, and these verses lay out a Lutheran Christian understanding of how grace works. They say that our relationship with God is not by our own choosing, our own decision, our own conversion, that God is the actor here and we are the object of God's loving, gracious action. Right? Grace, saving grace is God's choice. God's choosing, God's decision. And that grace we receive, through that grace we receive the gift of faith and that welcome into a faith community. Again, those few verses say, when it comes to matters of saving grace, God acts and by grace we respond with prayer and praise and thanksgiving. You know I had to do this one last time. So something from the Book of Concord, something Martin Luther wrote, right? He says, even though we concede free will, the freedom and power to perform external works, nevertheless, we do not ascribe to free will those spiritual powers of true fear of God, true faith in God, and the conviction and knowledge that God cares for us hears us and forgives us. These real works, the human art, heart cannot produce without the Holy Spirit. No one comes to God unless drawn. It's Jesus who chooses. But, <laughs> there's gotta be a but in here someplace, right? But God's choosing, choosing of the world, God's choosing invites our response, right? His choosing, God's choosing, invites our response. Not for heaven's sake, but for our life in community in this way. And that brings us to this lesson first from Joshua 24. Before moving into the land promised by God, Joshua gathers all the people like this and lays before them a choice. He rehearses all the saving acts of God. We didn't read that part, but it's there. It goes on and on all the saving acts of God on their behalf. He covers all the major ways that God has been calling them and sustaining them and saving them throughout their whole history, starting way back with Abraham. It's a history that's been filled with great hope and repeated disaster, right? But now, Joshua says, now, this day, now it's time for you to measure out your faithful response. And he asked simply, with all that God has done, how will you respond? Two verses lay it out clearly. And I thought maybe some of you would even have them on the wall. They're pretty common. The first is, choose this day whom you will serve. Joshua said to all the people, if you are not willing to serve the Lord, then choose whom you will serve. God has already chosen you. Now, will you choose someone else or something else for your source of security? And then Joshua gives his response. And I've seen this on houses, walls too. 
As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So here we are, all these years later, knowing and believing and trusting that God has chosen you in Christ for a life of faith and a life of witness. What will it be for you? Now, you're not rushing, but don't rush. (laughs) Don't rush your answer this morning. Take a moment. To actually follow and serve God is often quite the challenge. You heard that in the gospel lesson. Some things that Jesus does or that he teaches or that he invites us to do along with him, those things don't come easy. They don't sit well. And some of them seem near impossible. But did you hear this? John's lesson says that many turned away from Jesus. If you read a little bit farther in John 7, verse 5, it seems even Jesus' brothers didn't believe in him. A Bible scholar commented that the response to Jesus in his own time really was quite varied. There were complaints about him and complaints against him and outright disbelief and complete rejection and finally betrayal. And yet, And yet, for some who met Jesus, there was a confession of faith and a response of hope and trust, a response that shaped their whole life from that moment on. Is that us too? God chooses, you are invited, and you are enabled to respond to God's call and claim on you. Now, 3,000 years ago about Joshua, Joshua says, figure out if you're going to stay with that, that being chosen, or if you were going to choose a different direction, a different source of security, a differently, a different worldly God to follow. Here's how our faith seems to work out. Our response to God's choosing us is that we then respond by choosing the direction of our response each and every day, every day. That it's not a once and done deal from our side, though it is a once and done deal from God's side, who is always faithful to his choice. Serious questions. Whom are you serving? In what ways are you serving? What might you do differently in your serving? Paul, in his lesson, says, if your choice of response to God's grace is to follow Jesus, then it's time that you get dressed up. Followers of Jesus put on truth. They put on uprightness and integrity. They put on the gifts of faith in God's saving grace. And they lean into God's gospel of forgiveness towards all. If your response each day is to serve God alone, well, look around you. You never do it alone, but as a part of a community of faith. And your response, your response to God's choosing is always directed towards your neighbor. Any neighbor. Every neighbor especially the least among us. If your choice is to follow where Jesus is leading, then you pray each day for a spirit of boldness to proclaim this no longer mysterious gospel, right? You, by your words of compassion and your bent towards all things just and right, you take that mystery away by sharing God's love and forgiveness. By your Daily choosing, choose this day, choose every day. That gospel mystery becomes clear and life-giving to others. So again, God chooses, God chooses you. You choose your response to being chosen. That sounds dumb. You choose your response to being chosen because you're first chosen, right? Then... Do you stay and grow, or do you turn and go away? Jesus asked his disciples then and now, 
Do you also wish to go away? No. 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 Far be it from us. Here's what I've seen in my year at Agnes Day this past year. I see a faith community that says with Simon that you are coming to trust this word of hope. Lord, to whom can we go? You, Lord, have the words of eternal, abundant, joyous life. We are coming to believe, coming to know that you are the Holy One of God in our midst, in our world, in our hearts, in our life. With Joshua, I see that you are learning each day to confess this. But as for me and my household, we will each new day, every day, serve the Lord. Or maybe just with the whole of the Israelites, you are learning again and again and again to confess this hope. We will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And with each other, you are learning to become, to be a community of faith, a community of the faithful, the hopeful, the forgiven. The people said to Joshua, and we say to Jesus, the Lord our God, we will serve, and God alone we will obey. That's why it's been such a joy and delight for the last 12 months. It's been a gift this past year to serve God alone with all of you. Thanks be to God. Amen.